Thank you for joining us for another episode of Pro Talk with ProTech. Today we get to meet top real estate agent Ryan Johnson with the Nomis Group International. It's so nice to see you, Ryan. How are you doing today? I'm great, Haley. How are you? I'm doing well. Um, just to kind of get the conversation started, let's hear a little bit more about you. How long have you been an agent and how'd you kind of get into this industry? Yeah, so I've been an agent for almost 10 years now. Um, we have a team of 13 people. We're closing around 150 transactions a year. I got into real estate because I had a bad experience um, and I wanted a career change. I was in culinary for many years managing Marriott hotels. And uh, when my now 12 year old was about two, it was Christmas morning and I was still in the hotel. And he was like, morning, Merry Christmas, Dad. <laughs> and I was like, what's up, man? And after that, it was just like, I'm not, I'm not at home on Christmas morning. And it didn't matter how far I went in that industry. It was always going to be there every night, holiday and weekend. And, uh, and they were controlling my life. So I made a choice to get out because I saw what that real estate agent made from the sale of my home and knew that it was a good fit for me. So I, I went in that direction. Mm -hmm. So your bad experience was more towards like your other career path that you were headed in before real estate? It was, it was a culmination of both. You know, mm -hmm. I, I needed a change because of family and more freedom and, um, and can dictate my own career path with real estate. There's so many avenues to go in it. So it was that. And then the agent that was helping me buy my home, she wasn't bad. She was, she was a nice lady, but I mean, I had $8,000 left on the table when I went to closing, but I had no idea you know, I had choices to do with that. I, I ended up not getting that money um, towards my home. And that was frustrating. So I saw the things that uh, I knew I could do just as good, if not way better. And here we are. Mm -hmm, absolutely. Leading other people down the right path, it sounds like. <laughs> totally. That's, that's what this is all about. Yeah, I love that. Um, and do you have a team or are you kind of operating as a solo agent? We do have a team. Yeah. So I was solo for about five years, give or take. And then for the last four and a half, I joined with my business partner, Philip Simon, and he and I joined uh, together put Nomis Group on the map. So that's where we are now. We have, um, gosh, gone through everything from hiring and firing to, you know, up and down with the market. And here we are closing about 150 a year right now. Absolutely love that. And what areas do you kind of focus on? Yeah, so we are licensed in all three major areas of the DMV, so Maryland, Virginia, and D.C., um, but we have referral networks across the country. We've helped people in, I think now, like 30 of the 50 states, so yeah, we continue to branch out everywhere. We have uh, an expansion in Texas as well, right inside of uh, Austin. I love that. Are you guys tr planning to do all 50 states maybe one day? We are planning to do it all. There is no end in sight for us. You know, every time an opportunity comes or someone talented comes across our plate, we just find a way to make it work. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Love that. Um, and then just for kind of a fun question, we always kind of like to kick off the fun questions with um, what's the craziest thing that you've ever seen in a home? Gosh, craziest thing I've ever seen in a home. I have, um, you ever seen the movie, I think it's called The Ring. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's like Who a hasn't? horror movie, right? <laughs> yeah, so I, I've been in um, a basement that the owner had, um, had water damage and closed the door for like 13 years. Oh my God. And so I ended up having to sell that home um, because it was through a referral. And so I, I made sure to take care of them and do the right thing. But I walked into that basement and it was like the black mold up the walls, the the, the weeds are like growing through the windows and this guy was living upstairs like nothing had ever happened that was that was one and then I've seen some really crazy art I've seen showers decorated like fish tanks I've seen like these massive horse statues that's the tackiest thing you could ever imagine um and you know it's it's great because we make fun of it when we're there with the buyers like what you know does that come with the house I'm like well if you want it to but no yeah. So, so now when you yeah. see just a little bit of mold, you're like, this is nothing. <laughs> yeah. Right. Completely. Yeah. Everyone's like, is this bad? I'm like, yeah, it's bad, but I can show you worse. Yeah. But let me tell you this story real quick. Uh -huh, for sure. <laughs> yeah. That's so funny. Um, and if I am buying a home, what would you say would be the most important thing that I would need to know from a realtor's perspective? Get educated to make sure you're buying something that's going to put you in a great position on down the road. You know, if you're going to buy a home and you know there's projects, know what projects there's coming and know how much they're going to cost. Um, you know, a lot of people will make emotional decisions when buying a house. And I get it is an emotional decision, but it's also an investment decision. And so where are you going to be on down the road to make sure that if you have to move in three to five years, because we all know how quickly life can change, are you going to be in a good place to sell that home or rent that home? And so we really do a lot of deep diving with people into the financial side of it. And then what does it look like for you to live your life there? Because people will get oohed and odd by the you know, model homes, but they really don't picture their stuff in there. Will it fit? Do I come home every day and imagine myself walking through here and being happy? So 
education and just really diving into um, what it will be in the long run for you is really what we focus on. Mm-hmm, absolutely. And then at, from a, as a seller, what would you say would be the most important thing that I would need to know from a- well, right now, leave your home for about four days, let about 85 people come through and be ready for about 15 offers. Um, that's, that's kind of what it is right now. Normally um, it's preparation, you know, is, is the investment that you're going to put into your home to sell it worth it? A lot of people will say I needed to redo the, the bathrooms or the kitchens or the flooring. Um, and you have to make, again, an educated decision on, is that the right thing to do? Because if you're not going to get the return on investment from doing that, don't do it. So we really advise people on those types of things. And we do a lot of staging and really high-end photography and videography and stuff like that to highlight homes online, because that's super important. That's the number one place people are looking is online. So if it doesn't get uh, great exposure from that avenue, you've already kind of uh, shot yourself in the foot. Yeah, especially in this market when kind of it's kind of touch and go. Some people want to go out and see houses and other people are like, uh, I don't know. I don't know right now. Yeah. I mean, I think we've kind of gotten used to the COVID thing now for the most mm-hmm. part. People are taking good precautions no matter what. We've been operating business as usual since it started, but just being cautious across mm-hmm. the board, you know, and that's the biggest thing. So, you know, it, um, it, uh, it worked out well. Yeah. So. Yeah. Would you say you've been leveraging kind of more digital marketing since COVID started? We have, and we always were to begin with, but I mean, just putting it more out on our social media channels and things like that so people can see. Um, we've always been a little bit limited by what MLS will allow us to do. Mm-hmm. So we have to kind of point people in different directions to see places. Uh, we use Matterport, which is like the 3D tours. So if you ever go on Google Maps and you hit the little you know, arrow on the street and you can see this way or that way, it's the mm-hmm. same thing with the home tour. Yeah, love that. Um, And, you know, we were kind of talking a little bit about, you know, this crazy market right now. How would I know when the best time to buy or sell would be? Are there any clues that I can look for to kind of make that decision? No, it really comes down to what your timeline is and where you want to be on down the road. So, you know, people right now will say, I I don't want to buy a home because home prices are so expensive. And I say, I completely understand that. But what is your your timeline like in the long run? Are you going to be in this house for 10 or more years? Is this a forever home for you? Because if it is, with rates being you know, in between 28 to 3% right now, in the long run, you're going to make up that difference. And are you going to look back 10 or 15 years down the road and say, gosh, I really wish I wouldn't have paid that additional $20,000 over list price to get that home? You have to ask yourself those questions and find out what you're comfortable with. So that's what I always say. It's just it's case by case and what, what your plan is. Um, if people are thinking about moving in three years, then you, know, and you really don't want to rent because the math still makes sense to buy. Uh, buy something that needs a little bit of work. That's what I would say, because it's just like a new car. You know, you're, as soon as you drive it off the lot, if you're getting a you know brand new home that's completely done to the nines, it's it's going to be a minute before you're going to really start capturing equity with that. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Um, and then, so with real estate, it's very clear that there's a ton of different moving pieces, but what would you say would be your favorite thing about the industry? And you don't have to pick just one thing. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's actually, it's the service at the end of the day. I mean, the relationships is what matters most in this business and just showing people that you can take care of them, put them in a great spot and that they can trust you. That's, that's my favorite thing about it is just making sure that I'm doing something for someone that they can't do on their own. Mm-hmm, absolutely. And do you prefer working with buyers or sellers or do you have a preference? Oh gosh. I love driving around. Um, I've always enjoyed kind of the cruising sometimes where I have to like the other day I went from Stafford back to Arlington and then back out West. And, um, and it was fun. It was a good day of driving. So I enjoy that part of it, but you know what, there's, there's a thrill of competition when it comes to selling and buying though too. And so when you're representing a seller, that's the biggest thing is, is really competing with everything else in the market and getting them the most money possible and highlighting their home as best as we can. So they're both great. I don't know if I really have a true preference, but if you were to pin me against the wall, I'd, I'd say buyers. Mm-hmm. Man, that's a long drive. What do you do during that drive? Do you listen to audiobooks, music? I do. Yeah, yeah. I listen to a lot of podcasts and stuff like that. Um, and then sometimes I just zone out. It's quiet. I've got three kids. They're 12, 9, and 3. They're all boys. And uh, man, I go home and it's just the lid pops off in two seconds. So I'll take a quiet ride sometimes too. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Love that. Um, and then let's talk about a really challenging time for you and how you overcame it. And this can be personally or professionally. Sure. Yeah. Challenging times. Um, probably two really come to mind that, um, that stand out is one when I started getting into this business because it's a commission-based business and you're not going to get a salary. So you better go out there and get it. And so I did transition for about a year. I was managing um, the Stanley Steamer in Gainesville. So I was on a truck out there cleaning carpets and, and hauling hose and doing all these things just to make ends meet because I left the culinary industry. So I had to have some sort of a, a normal job and being on the trucks too allowed me to talk to people as I was getting started. 
And so I did that for about uh, a little over a year. And that was really challenging getting into this business. Um, personally, I've lost a brother at 24, really tragically. And that, you know, set the tone for just what life means and, and how to battle through all these things that we go through all the time, because people get caught up in what is day-to-day -day noise. You know, and a lot of, a lot of what we go through every day is just noise. Mm -hmm. And so it really taught me how to just hunker down and focus on what matters. So those, those were two really challenging times that have brought me to where I am now. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I love that kind of taking something, you know, so tragic that happened to you, like kind of putting a positive spin on it and, you know, looking at your day to day and maybe you're like, this really isn't that bad. You know, I'm stressed yeah. today, but it's really not as bad as it could be. And, and sharing that with other people too, because it really puts things into perspective and it helps them as well. I have some young agents on our team and, you know, we all get stressed with different things that come at us and, um, and it just helps to have that insight for them too. Mm -hmm, absolutely. I always say, you know, your stress today is not your stress tomorrow, you know? Right. Yeah. Everything and changes. it's what you make of it too. You know, you have a choice. Yeah. You have a choice of what you do with your situations. So. Yeah. I love that. Thanks for sharing that. Um, and then tell me a biggest life achievement, something that you are really proud of or passionate about. Man, building this business. It is, it has been crazy. You know, in four years we have grown faster than most other teams that I know. Mm -hmm. And um, and just such a great positive culture, you know, from our administrative staff to our agents to just our clients. I mean, it's all no drama. Um, everyone is all about helping the community we serve through real estate and just um, and just continue to push forward. We break and fix every single day. We all have problems. We all have uncomfortable conversations. Don't be afraid of the uncomfortable conversations. Just say it. You know, you know, we're all here for the right reason. So there's no reason to you know, act like you can't say what you feel and or worry about what confrontation is going to come, it will be fine. So, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Love that. Honesty is the best, pos the best policy always. That's what I always say. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You can go to sleep with yourself every night knowing you did the right thing. Yeah. Absolutely. You know? Yeah. That's a great yeah, it's point. Huge. Um, and then tell me something that most people probably don't know about you. What are some hobbies and fun facts? Oh, let's see. Um, I really like fish. Not fishing. I like fishing too, but um, like eating but, fish. Uh, no, like no, like 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 aquariums. Oh, so. <laughs> okay, <laughs> that's way better. <laughs> yeah, yeah um, they're fun, and um, so I continue to kind of dabble in that a little bit. It's not really intentional, but it's neat. I can sit there and stare at fish for a while, just watching them swim around. Yeah. Um, huge sports people. Everyone knows that about me, though. But sports very competitive across the board. Um, I like building models. I build model rockets with my kids. Um, I will probably try everything at least once um i don't know it's about it i'm pretty average in general i guess yeah i love that so earlier in the conversation when you were talking about the craziest thing that you've seen at a home and you said that aquarium shower was that your shower <laughs> <laughs> yeah right i do have some taste Haley. you know i do like, I, I don't think i could actually do that that'd be a great joke for like uh like an outhouse in a you know in a um like a pool house or something like that maybe yeah but this is literally their bathroom Oh my god! And, and, like, and the countertops were black and had like red tile. It was beyond. So no, that was crazy. not mine. But but good try. Yeah, maybe maybe, <laughs> maybe one day down the road it'll inspire you. <laughs> I have like see mine would actually be a fish tank. That that would be the thing. Like you know if I'm gonna design something like that, it would be like an actual fish tank. Yeah, that'd be cool. Which, what's thinking like, about now? That would be pretty crazy. But do you like collect like exotic fish? Like what's kind of your your niche there? No, so like um. So South American and African cichlids are the coolest thing because they're the closest to saltwater that I can get that look like that. Saltwater is hard. I've met a lot of folks that have done it and um, I am just not prepared for the maintenance yet. That might be a retirement project, you know, <laughs> or, or when it's just like, you know, pay someone to come maintain the tank because the, the levels of um, the, the water toxicity has to be maintained really well. Mm -hmm. And I'm not up for that right now. Yeah, I hear you. I'll come I home. My kids have dumped like four pounds of food in it too or something as well, you know, uh, yeah, that's me. I have a beta fish and I'm hardly keeping him alive. And I feed him like three times a day. And I recently read you're only supposed to do it once. So I think uh, maybe killing him with that. <laughs> well, you haven't killed him yet. So you can always take it back. Yeah, there you Put go. Him on a diet. Exactly. <laughs> Love that. Um, and then where do you see yourself in the next five years? What are some long term goals for you? Yeah. So the next five years, we are going to close 500 or more transactions a year in the next five years. That is, that is the business goal. Um, we want to be able to take a massive trip annually, annually with, with our team, whether it's to a beach or an exotic place, something of the sort, because, you know, if you're not having fun, it's not worth making the money, you know, so let's go get it. Um, personally, I mean, gosh, my, my boys are continuing to grow. Um, 
I want to be retired by the time I'm 55. I'm 41 now. I'm not working past 55. So um, personally, it's just really being a good father for them is my goal. And, uh, and then when they get to be in the 18 or more range where I retire, I'm going to go buy an RV and we're just going to go, we're just going to go travel across the country for weeks and weeks. That's what I'm going to do. There you go. You definitely got to do it. I've been to all 50 states, so you got to do it. You have? It. Yeah, I just recently did it last year. Well, two years ago before the p- pandemic hit. And man, I got I tr- RV traveled too. So you definitely have to do it. That's you awesome. Any time for any recommendations that I'd love to share. Did you do this like one shot? Yeah, so uh, 11 months on the road. So it was close wow. to a year and it was the most incredible experience anybody who wants to travel and just do long trips highly encourage it it was you will have to share how you plan that i'm sure everyone that listens to this would actually like to know that too i know a lot of people that have done three weeks and four weeks at a time and gone to 10 or 12 or something like that but saying i'm gonna hit all 50 one shot Mm -hmm. way to go yeah drove to alaska flew to hawaii yeah i'll have to do maybe a podcast segment on traveling not that i'm an expert but i mean i'm pretty close (laughs) you gotta gotta be close to it if you put 11 months of 50 states together that's cool yeah it was amazing but yeah what was your favorite part um favorite part of the country or favorite part about the trip (laughs) the trip uh i would say driving to alaska i mean took me five days to get to alaska and i didn't have cell phone signal the entire time and it was just like you know, I, I imagine back in, you know, before car phones were a thing and things like that, you know, road trips were maybe a little bit harder because you didn't have that GPS, you didn't have the digital cell phone, you couldn't just Google something. And that's exactly how I felt driving to Alaska. And it was quite the, ex- I mean, my boyfriend and I were ready to kill each other because there's yeah. no radio. It's just radio silence the whole time. You don't get any radio signal. And so we're just like singing road trip songs. <laughs> <laughs> that reminded me of uh, of Dumb and Dumber. I don't know. Some people love the movie, some hate it. I'm actually a lover of it, to be honest, because the humor is so ridiculously dumb that it's funny. Yeah. But when they're when they're going across, and they don't have radio, they're like, "Mock, yeah." yeah. <laughs> <laughs> really it's so hilarious. annoying. <laughs> yeah. Perfect. Yeah, that was us. We we got a joke book at some point along the way, so we're like telling dad jokes to each other, and it just man, you get to a point where you're like, never again. <laughs> it also proves who you're meant to be with too sometimes, right? Hopefully you guys are still together. I don't know. Yeah, that, absolutely. You know? One day I'm going to have to do it with my kids and it'll be just the same experience for me. Yeah. So yeah, absolutely. Awesome. I love That's that. Cool. Um, and then let's say I'm your next prospective client. Why should I call you? Because I'm going to make sure that you get where you want to go when you want to get there and you're going to be a prop- as profitable as possible. 100%. We've got your back from inside and out, start to finish, all the support with our staff. I mean, there's just nothing inside this organization that, um, that would put you in a bad spot. And it's great because when you work with the admin staff after you go under contract, um, you know, I'm able to continue to go out and look for other options for you, whether it's investing or other projects you have that you're working on. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And tell everybody how they can reach you. What's a good phone number, email, social media handles, things like that. Awesome. Yeah. So uh, phone number 703-499-4202. Email is Ryan, R-Y-A-N-E, at nomisgroupinternational.com, the longest email in history. So <laughs> N-O-M-I-S, Group International. It's all spelled out. Uh, Ryan underscore Realtor on Instagram, and then just Ryan Johnson on Facebook. And we have our Facebook uh, business page as well, Nomis Group International, on across the board. Mm-hmm. So we're, we're out there. Um, we've got like I think it's close to 10,000 people in the database now that we market to on a regular basis. Um, we have four events that we do every year. We did, you know, now we're working back at to find out what we can do, but we have about 400 people that come out. We buy out movie theaters, we buy out parks. Um, we do some smaller events too. And we bought out Dave and Buster's last year. We do golf tournaments and majority of it is for charity. Um, so Carry the Full Term is an organization we work for uh, in Haymarket. It is a group that helps expecting mothers in need that have come from difficult situations, uh, not abusive situations, but a lot of homelessness or, um, or refugees that have come here and their husbands ended up getting deported or something happened and they are stuck here with their kids. So they teach them how to uh, get back on their feet, how to manage a bank account, how to get jobs, how to get driver's licenses and everything else and be, um, be someone that can contribute to society and then put, uh, put their two feet under them. So. Yeah, that's what we do. Have fun, make money, make a difference. 
Yeah, I love that. And how would somebody who wanted to learn a little bit more about that, how would they find some information on those events? Yeah, go to um, nomusgroupinternational.com and we just have an events tab or just call. You know, if you want to get involved, just just call. Uh, we do a lot of other things too where, you know, someone just needs a hand. We have trucks that will go and haul stuff away for. We help our buyers and sellers no matter what. Because again, you know, it's just about helping and doing the right thing. And all of that leads to other stuff. So Mm -hmm. yeah. Absolutely. I love that. Well, thank you so much, Ryan, for taking the time uh, to chat with me today. It was so nice meeting you and, and hearing more about your business. Awesome. Thanks, Haley. Appreciate it as well. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you.